Welcome to geometry. Uh, so we're actually going to start geometry this year with an, a little bit of algebra review. So the next couple of days, we're going to take some of the topics that you learned last year in algebra that you are going to have to use all throughout the year this year in geometry. These are topics that are going to pop up in the middle of problems that we're using uh, to learn new things with that you need to remember some algebra skills in order to be able to complete. So these are all really important skills. We spent a ton of time on them last year, so hopefully it'll come back to you pretty quickly. But we're gonna take these days to help refresh those memories and uh, get you back rolling so that you're prepped and ready when those problems come up in the middle of geometry this year. To move on over to our solving systems of equations. So last year we talked to, actually talked about three different ways of solving systems of equations. The first way really links up to our linear equations really well, and that was solving systems by graphing. All right, so if you were graphing, right, we'd have our little coordinate planes here. I'm gonna come up with three examples for you. All right, so normally when we're solving systems, remember that a system of equations is really just, you know, two really or more equations solved at the same time. So these two equations will have two variables, x and y normally, right? If we have three variables, x, y, z, then we have to have three equations in order to solve. The number of variables matches the number of equations that you need in order to solve. Uh, number of variables equals the number of equations needed. Okay, so if I have two equations, for example, x and y, just like our coordinate plane here, then I would have two lines on my graph. I would have one line that maybe looked something like this, and I would have one line that maybe looked something like this, right? And if you remember, what I'm looking for is that point where they intersect. Oops, helps if I can spell intersect. That point where they intersect, x comma y, right? That's the x and the y values that work for both of the equations, orange and green. So when I'm graphing a system of equations, I'm looking for the point where they intersect, which is why we always write our solutions to systems as points, unless of course they give us a word problem and some context what X and Y actually stand for. All right, but when we went through this last year, we said, well, there are some different situations that could happen. I might have one line that looks like this and another line that looks like this. Well, if I'm looking for the point where they intersect, where do those two lines intersect? Never, so this would be no solution, right? Because these are parallel lines and parallel lines never intersect. All right, there was another situation where I had one line here, say, and the other line came and landed right on top of it. We called those ones overlapping lines or the same line. When that happens, where do they intersect? Well, they intersect everywhere. So this is called infinite solutions. Just a quick review of solving by graphing. We're not gonna spend any time doing that. We just kind of just reviewed linear equations. It kind of goes along with it. The other ways that we had to solve systems, one of them was solving by substitution 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 was the one where you were trying to find x equals or y equals or in other words isolate x or y in one of the equations first and then plug that x or y whatever it equals in to the other equation Hopefully that's ringing some bells. We'll do some practice problems here in a minute. So substitution is the one where we have the x equals or the y equals, and you plug it into the other one. All right, so then the other option we have was called elimination. 
Elimination is the one where you need to have opposites in x or y. Opposites meaning same coefficient, one positive, one negative. And then we need to add the equations together in order to eliminate one of those variables because opposites, when you add them together, they cancel to zero. So they would cancel that variable out. So those are our different ways. Graphing, we're not gonna really spend too much time on. Substitution and elimination, though, these are our algebra methods that we're gonna remember how to do here in the next couple of problems. So I'll do one with you here just to get you back in the mode before I have you go off on your own. Feel free, though, if you remember how to do this, just jump ahead. So if I look at this system, 4x plus 6y equals negative 20, and y equals negative 7x minus 16. So if I'm trying to think substitution or elimination, which one is going to work the best here? Substitution was where I'm looking for an x equals or a y equals. Oh, look at that. Boom. It's already done for me. y equals negative 7x minus 16. So I take what y equals, and I'm going to plug it in for y in my other equation. So my first step here is going to look like 4x plus 6, but instead of y, I'm going to plug in the negative 7x minus 16 for my bottom equation. But then I finish out the top one with the equals negative 20. Hopefully this is ringing some bells for you. All right, now I'm down to only one variable. I only have x's left, right? Uh, x, x, no more y, so I'm ready to solve it. So first thing will be to distribute the 6 here. So I have 4x minus 42x minus 60, 36, so 96 is equals negative 20. Okay, uh, combine my variables that are the same. So 4x minus 42x gives me negative 38x minus 96 equals negative 20. I think I'll go ahead and move that 96 over. Add 96 to both sides, I get negative 38x equals 76. Divide both sides by negative 38. Oops. And I get, ooh, move it over here, x equals negative 2. Now remember, our answer to a system is always a point, x comma y. I just found x that goes in the first spot, but I still need to find y. So don't forget that you're not done when you get one answer here. What I need to do is take that answer and plug it in. Remember, you can use either equation, but with substitution, one of the equations is clearly going to be easier. So I'm going to use that bottom one. So here I've got y equals negative 7. Now instead of x, I'm going to use my negative 2 that I just solved for. All right. And then I'm going to finish it out, minus 16. So y equals negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14 minus 16. So y equals negative 2 as well. So my solution to this system was the point negative 2, negative 2. And that was by substitution. I probably should have written that one first. Substitution. All right. Let's see what the next problem brings us. Hopefully that was a good refresher for you of solving by substitution. Let's check this one out. We've got 4x equals negative 15 minus 3y, 19 equals 8y minus 9x. Why don't you take a shot at this one? Oh, well, maybe not yet, quite yet. You can if you want. If you want to, just go ahead and skip ahead. This one is pretty crazy, huh? Let's see. So looks like my x is almost isolated on the top, but I have to divide by 4. And if I have to divide by 4, Right here with this guy, I would end up with a fraction. Actually, here too, I would end up with a fraction. If you ever end up with fractions for substitution, don't do it. I see you down at the bottom, that's going to happen as well, no matter what. So substitution is no good for us. So we're going to focus on elimination on this one. Now, if you remember elimination, when I'm looking for opposites, the best way to do that is to start... start by putting it into standard form. Standard form 
is AX plus BY equals C. So get those X's started out front, put the Y's next, play not, move all those plain numbers to the other side. So if I look at how to do that, on my top equation, I would have to add 3Y to both sides so that I could get it off the right-hand side. So that top equation would become 4X plus 3Y equals negative 15. Okay, on the bottom equation, I actually have the x's and my y's both on the same side, and my number on the other side, I would just probably switch sides, you know, put the left stuff on the right and the right on the left, but I can do that with an equal sign, and then just switch these order, but be careful that the negative sign goes with the x. So this would be negative 9x plus 8y equals 19. Notice I didn't just kind of fudge and move things around. It's real easy to lose a negative sign that way. Line them up in standard form. Move things by doing opposite operations if you need to jump over that equal sign. And watch where your negatives go, right? Okay, so now I see, uh, looking at my equations here, I don't have opposites yet. I have one positive and one negative in my x's, but the coefficient on the top is 4, and the coefficient on the bottom is 9. So if you don't have opposites when you just rearrange them, then you need to multiply in order to get opposites. So if I multiply, I would say on the top, I'm gonna to multiply every single thing by nine. And on the bottom, I'm gonna multiply every single thing by four. That will make 36x on the top and negative 36x on the bottom. So if I do that, let's see, four times nine, I just said 36x plus 27y equals 9 times negative 15 will be negative 135. On the bottom, I'd have negative 36x plus 32y equals 76. All right. Now I can see that I have opposites. My x's are one positive, one negative, and the same coefficient, so I am ready to add my equations together. When I add them, 36x minus 36x cancel out. My y's are still there. 27 plus 32 would give me 59y, and negative 135 plus 76 gives me negative 59. Now all I have to do is solve this very simple equation by dividing both sides by 59, and I get y equals negative 1. So again, remember that our solution to our system is a point. I have just found y is negative 1, but I need to find x. Now again, remember, you can use any equation that you want in order to plug back in and solve for the other variable. It's not quite as, you won't have one that's quite as easy as you do on substitution. I'm gonna maybe pick that top equation and we'll plug into that top equation to solve for x. So I'll have 4x equals negative 15 minus three times negative one that I just found. So I have 4x equals negative 15 plus 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. I have 4x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 4, and I get x equals negative 3. So my solution to that system was the point negative 3, negative 1. All right, we reviewed substitution, we reviewed elimination. What do they have for us next? Our very last problem for this lesson just give it everything you got here. Can you solve this crazy equation? I think you can, this system. Um, just remember, what do you do first when you see fractions, right? We're not going to go with substitution on this one because I don't want to do substitution with fractions. There's no way you're going to get all those little tiny details right. So instead, clear those fractions. All right, take a shot at this one and then check your answer or keep watching if you're stuck. Okay, so like I said, on the bottom, I'm definitely going to clear my fractions first. So I'm going to do times 8 times 8 times 8. Remember, I'm looking for what can I multiply by that would get those every single number off the denominator, the lowest common denominator, if you will, that would clear them all at once. So here, if I divide by 8 and multiply by 8, those guys are going to cancel. Here, if I divide by 2 and multiply by 8, well, this 2 would cancel and make this into a 4. 
So on that bottom equation, maybe I'll start moving over here. I'll get 8x minus 9y, because the denominator and, the t and that um, thing I multiplied by canceled, equals, now here I've got 5 times 4 on the right, so equals 20. All right, well, it looks like I'm rocking elimination or getting it set up. So I'm going to make sure that I write that top equation in standard form as well, right? Which just means I'm just going to swap these guys over, right? But, you know, on the bottom, I multiplied by 8, but I'm looking at these ones on the top, and I'm thinking, you know, I could divide all of those by 2 or multiply everything by 1 half, if you will, and that's going to make that equation a lot easier, right? So I kind of swapped the order here, but let's just go with, let's see, so 6x divided by 2 would be 3x. 2y divided by 2 would be just plus y. And negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10. So I did a couple of things there, but hopefully you could follow along. Ooh. All right, now I've got it lined up. I lined it up for elimination. I could do elimination, multiply everything on the top by 9. Boom, ready to go. Or I could do substitution, move that 3x over to the other side, uh, and then go from there. It's totally up to you. Honestly, for me, I like elimination better. So I'm going to say I'm going to multiply everything on that top equation by 9. I don't even have to touch the bottom equation. So this is going to become 27x plus 9y equals negative 90. Don't forget that guy over there. Bottom equation is still 8x minus 9y equals 20. Notice my y's are set up, prepped with my opposites. So I can add my two equations together here. And when I add them, pew, pew, these y's are going to cancel. 27 plus 8 gives me 35x equals negative 90 plus 20 gives me negative 70. I'm going to divide that very e easy equation both sides by 35. I get x equals negative 2. So in my solution here, wherever I'm going to put that, we'll put it here. I get my x is negative 2. And again, you could use any equation that you want in order to solve for y. I usually recommend going back to the beginning just to make sure you didn't goof something up and then goof it up twice. Um, but I don't know. I think that maybe this orange equation that I simplified looks like the easiest one to plug into. So I think I'm going to hit this guy here to solve for y. So I will have 3 instead of x. I just found that one to be negative 2. So I'm going to plug that in. So 3 times negative 2 plus y equals negative 10. So I have negative 6 plus y equals negative 10. I'm going to add 6 to both sides. I get y equals negative 4. So my solution to this system was the point negative 2, negative 4. Hopefully you got that one without me.